Hi, this is Gadi Elkan with Dallas International Film Festival. We're here with the inaugural recipient of the L.M. Kit Carson Maverick Award, uh, the legendary Monty Hellman. Uh, Monty, thank you, A, for coming back to Dallas. Um, if you don't mind me starting with, with our city, um, I guess RoboCop has always been kind of nostalgic for its Dallas sites. I would love to know your Dallas experiences when you were here for that, and then any other fun Dallas stories you might have. Well, I, I've been looking for the locations. I can't, uh, in the way in from the airport, I haven't seen any, but uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, doing all the, uh, the so-called second unit, uh, <laughs> but we only worked with uh, the first unit. <laughs> and uh, so we were with Robo and, uh, and uh, Nancy, and uh, it, was, uh, it was great. What's it like, I mean, you obviously go back with, with, with Roger to, to the start of all this. Um, when you look back, what are the, the memories from the time with Roger that kind of stick out to you before you started kind of getting into directing? I mean, way back when you first, first started as a young filmmaker. Well, I, I started with Roger as a director. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that was, then I, and then I, it was downhill from there on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, that was, uh, uh, Roger, Roger was wonderful. Uh, he was uh, kind of a, a, an investor in uh, a theater company I had where we did the uh, Los Angeles premiere of uh, Waiting for Godot. And uh, when we got thrown out of our theater after the first year uh, because they were converting it to a movie theater, he, uh, he said, uh, take that as a sign. And so he said it was time to get into movies, and uh, so he uh, put me into movies in <laughs> a movie called *Beast from Haunted Cave*. And, uh, hardly an auspic auspicious uh, introduction. I'm kind of curious when you got into, you know, the films with like Jack later on in the '60s, and um, what was that experience like of just tackling that side of, of those films and then getting to do? you know, the, the real start of the indie film movement for us? Well, it was interesting. Uh, the, the four films I did with Jack, uh, two in the Philippines and two in Utah, uh, were all within the space of a year. Yeah. That's the most productive year. <laughs> and then, it, again, it's downhill all the way. Uh, you know, I, I've had as many as, well, as you probably know, the, be, between uh, my so-called last film and then my new last film, uh, there was 22 years, so that, that's not quite as good as uh, four films in one year. Do you miss that pace? I mean, that's a crazy pace. Yeah, no, that was terrific. That, that, was, that, that was the best time of my life. Uh, the, uh, we did two back-to-back -back in the Philippines and then two back-to-back -back in Utah. Was it wild to shoot in the Philippines? I mean, what was the, the weirdest thing about shooting over there? Well, it was like shooting in the Wild West. Uh, you'd go into a, a gas station and a guy would have a 45 in, a, in his belt. <laughs> <laughs> and he needed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of curious, when you, you've you put your name behind so many people, you, you've also taught as well, um, like when we think of Reservoir Dogs and Quentin, what's made you put your name behind filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino and producing his, his films? Well, I, I, I kind of backed into that by accident. I was originally the, supposed to direct it. And uh, then the day that I met with Quentin, he had just sold uh, uh, True Romance and uh, the script. And uh, he said, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but, he, but now I I've decided to direct Reservoir Dogs, <laughs> and I said, "Okay, well, good." We were having ice, ice cream. Uh, what do you call it? Banana splits at a place that don't no longer exists on Sunset uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and uh, I said, "Well, if, if, if there's anything I can do to help," and uh, he says, "Yeah, you could <laughs> find the money," <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I did. So you've shot so many places, New York, LA, obviously the Philippines, Utah. Is there a, a perfect place for you, memory-wise, of like, that's the funnest I've had shooting-wise, city-wise, and getting to show? Well, I, I shot uh, two movies uh, where we were based in Rome, and, and uh, Rome is, is sort of my second home. I, I really got to love it, and uh, 
stayed at the same place both times. <laughs> and so I was, I was, uh, you know, six months each each movie, and uh, and uh, it was at the top of the Spanish Steps, and it was, you know, pretty romantic. What's it like um, being able to? I mean, you're our inaugural recipient for the Maverick Award. I mean, you will always be a Maverick in the eyes of <clears throat> filmmakers. Is is that something you embrace, or is that something that's just after all these years, why not get another award? <laughs> well, uh, it, it's hap it happens to be my second Maverick Award. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, Kit Carson is special. That's the reason I came. I, I've stopped going to festivals, at least uh, unless I, I was making a movie at the time. And uh, the fact that uh, it was Kit and uh, honor of him, uh, that's what brought me here. He's impacted our city so much with not just bringing film festivals, but bringing film to, to Dallas and all of Texas, really. What are your memories of, of Kit and his work? Well, my, my biggest memory was his wedding to uh, Karen, you know. And uh, that was, uh, I guess it was in uh, uh, Benedict Canyon. And uh, it was uh, it was a pretty pretty amazing uh, event. and. Uh, uh, I hadn't, haven't really spent much time with him uh, since that time. Mm. I knew him uh, when, when I was uh, preparing uh, Two Lane Blacktop, and uh, I think I met him during that time. And, and uh, he, we, we haven't crossed paths uh, very much since. Being able to showcase Two Lane Blacktop, that, that must be fun in its own right, since it, it took so long for Universal to get this out. Like, it must be nice to showcase this film in Especially well, well it, it wouldn't it wouldn't exist except uh, for Robert Redford. Mm. Uh, he uh, demanded they, they make a print <laughs> for uh, the uh, uh, Sundance <coughs> Festival, and uh, uh, it's been in circulation ever since. What was your fondest memories of that? Because I mean, it's 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 a racing movie, but it's not. It's it's so much more like a road film. It's so much more about these guys. I mean. Was that just a fun experience, just with James and? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was great because uh, we, by necessity, we uh, shot from coast to coast, and we started in L.A. and we wound up in North Carolina, and uh, it was. We were living the movie, and that's how James remembers it. He uh, he said, "Well, we we didn't have to do anything because we were living it." <laughs> What was the, so some of those memories probably are lost, but I mean, what was some of your favorite memories of that, that journey? Oh God, I, I, you know, it just lots of uh, shooting all night and, uh, and driving during the day. <laughs> those are cool cars too. I mean, you guys yeah. got incredible cars for the film. Um, production value and, and the way you approach films, you guys were running and gunning and you helped create kind of that, that road theme, I feel like. Can you talk about what's it like looking at film, not necessarily as genre, but how do you look at film? And well, I do look at it, look at it as uh, genre. I, uh, I'm only interested in, in genre movies. Mm. I, I, I make movies, uh, westerns, uh, war movies, <laughs> uh, film noir. That, that's what interests me, even as a viewer. You know. I, it's a it's rare it's a rare family movie that I <laughs> I uh, attach myself to. You know your top ten um, for the the Criterion Collection. You ended with uh, all the Fellini films. I'm curious what what filmmakers inspired you though, as or or cinematographers even that that kind of motivated you along your career. I, I think uh, the most important one was uh, John Huston, mm. and uh, I think. Uh, the, the Asphalt Jungle. It was a big influence on me. Wow. What was it about that? I mean, that's such a... I just, I, well, I, I have a, a shot at, at the end of uh, Tulane Blacktop that is uh, an homage to <laughs> the last shot of the Asphalt Jungle. So it's even crept into your work. That's, wow. Yeah. Well, Monty, thank you so much for, for coming to Dallas. It's such an honor to have you here for the Maverick Award. Um, and for it to be, you know, the inaugural one for Kit, and uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, I appreciate it. Awesome, thank you, Michael.